Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got this 07 Town and Country here. I got brought into us yesterday. I had a whole big honk and list of things that needed looked at. And the check engine light was on and that was one of the items. It had a couple codes stored in it. One of those codes was I believe a P0480 and that contains the coolant fan circuit. So we're going to have a look at that. So instead of busting out a scan tool, we're just going to flash our codes. So yeah, we've got a PO404, so we've got your classic EGR code, and then a PO or a P0480, and that's your um, classic cooling fan code. I'm a little pressed on time uh, right now, so we're not going to do, uh, we're going to skip a couple things here. Right now the engine's fully warmed up, it's actually pretty hot right now. Uh, I did check the fans and see if they turn on. If they turn on the AC, the fans do not turn on. There's two cooling fans. Neither one of them turn on. Um, the guy doesn't have a complaint of an overheat, but he also hasn't left it sit and idle for any extended period of time. Uh, I did go in here and check the fuse, just to see if the fuse for the fan was blown. So it's way up here in the top corner. It's labeled, uh, if you're checking your own, uh, radiator fan. It's a 40 amp fuse, so that sits right up here in the in the IPM relay center. So that's where the fuse resides. Uh, visual inspection showed that the fans are hooked up. They're not seized up. You can reach in there and spin them. So what we got to do next is go right to the fan relay and just do some quick testing. Uh, to do that, got to pull the headlight out of all things. So we'll take the headlight out. Get that unplugged, set that to the side. And our relay lives under here. The other thing we'll do too, we'll get some, we'll get the grill loosened up here so we can get back here. Kind of stinker to get to. Our little mitts down in there. Yeah, I'll tell you what, more right here. Just pull that one off too. Show you where this relay lives. So she lives right there. So there it is. That's your cooling fan relay on this Chrysler. Uh, and they kind of get it out there, I imagine, to sort of run cool. These things drop some pretty high amperage. Like I said, you can see it through the headlight bucket too, kind of sitting down in there. If you just want to do some quick tests on it, I'm pretty sure we're going to find this is bad. So I've got to reach down here and get the little little red lock off the connector. Get it unplugged and get up here where we can do some testing on this uh, connector and make sure it's receiving uh, the correct signals. Uh, you know, when the fan's commanded on and then if it does, then we'll throw a relay in it. All right, so on this relay, all we're gonna need is our fancy little uh, scope on a rope here. So first thing we're gonna do is check it for power, okay? So this here has two it has two big wires going to it. One of them is going to be a full-time power from our 40 amp fuse, and the other one's going to go to the fan. Okay, so we're hooked, test lights hooked and battery negative. Anything we touch that's positive should have, should light the light. Nice and bright. So we're on front probe. So right there, that is our full-time power. That is our red with orange stripe, it appears. Full-time power and none of the other ones should have power on them, which they don't. Okay, so we can see full-time power on that one. So theoretically, the other big one here, the blue, no, I can't really see well right here, blue with a green maybe, so the other heavy wire, that one should run through the fan. So uh, in order to check that, to check the fan circuit, just take your test light, hook your test light to battery positive, anything we touch that has continuity you know, to a ground, gonna light up and our fan should light up if our fan is good. 
Uh, if our fan motor was no good or we had an open circuit going to our fan, we would not have a test light here, okay? If that makes sense. That's a, that's a fantastic way to find an open circuit in a fan also. I almost want to say Ivan did a video, uh, perhaps on a blower motor one time, uh, where you just take your test light, you hook it battery positive, you hook it to your, uh, you know, to the fan circuit, and then you reach down and you spin the fan by hand. And when you get to the dead spot, your test light will actually go out. It's a pretty, it's a pretty neat test. So that proves that we have power. Our fan circuit is good. And now we, we have to worry about the control side of this relay. So we have two small gauge wires. One of these on this style relay is a full-time ground. It's that one there. Our test light is still hooked to battery positive. So it appears to be the black with a green stripe. Okay, so there's black green, that one's full-time ground. Now, on a typical relay, you would expect the other small wire, the control wire, to be you know, on off and, and provide power. So we got, you know, we got a ground, it provides power, closes the relay, away we go, everybody's happy. That is not how these work. Um, the other wire, this other control wire, is gonna be a pulse width modulated ground. It's gonna be you know, duty cycle controlled. Technically, we should probably check this with the scope, um, but we can use our test light. Um, you got the key on here? No, key's off, okay. Um, I just heard making some noise here. Uh, we, can, we can use our test light, we can hook it in here. What I'll do is I'll have Hannah start the car, we'll turn the AC on because that's gonna, this car has a functioning AC, so technically when the AC's on, you know, a certain amount of time after the pump kicks on, it should receive the command to turn the relay on, to turn the cooling fans on. Uh, the um, power module is sent a signal from the ECM to here and then to the cooling fans, I believe. I'd have to look at a wire diagram and be sure, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Uh, don't hold me to it. <laughs> so what we're gonna see, I guess to get back to that, being that this is a pulse switch modulated signal, we're not gonna see a bright light. We're probably gonna see a dim light and as it tries to increase speed, you know, as that duty cycle, you know, gets higher, uh, you know, more on time, uh, we're going to see the light get brighter. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. So, anyhow, uh, do you see the AC button in? Is there an AC button in there? Yeah. Go ahead and start it up, and then turn the blower motor on full speed, and then push the AC button so it lights up. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and start it. So like I say, we should see this. After we hear okay, the pump just kicked on, we're still with the battery positive. And this is a pulse with modulated ground, so when that commands the fan on, we should see this light up. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So you see how it's getting dimmer? So it kind of started out bright and it kind of got dim. Now it's getting brighter. Uh, you know, without without the fans, the AC. Okay, turn the AC switch off, Anna. Got the AC switch off. Okay, turn the whole blower motor off. Is there a power button on it? No. Okay. Well, right now it's commanding the fans on at pretty much full duty cycle. So that light is nice and bright compared to you know a regular ground. So that's a regular ground. That's the control side there. You can see they're almost just as bright. So go ahead and turn the car off, Anna. And we can see the control shuts off. So just for the sake of experiment, just start it up again, Hannah. There's no, there's no, it's not being commanded for control. Okay, turn the AC and everything back on. Okay, it just commanded the fan on. So that's uh, it's conclusive. It's a little bit dim there, but you can see that it's starting to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Now, if we put a scope on there, you'd see that duty cycle. Uh, that would be really going around. It's probably up at 100% right now. Okay, go ahead and shut it off. I don't, I don't want to damage the AC compressor uh, getting that hot. So that's that. You don't need anything fancy to test these uh, relays. Uh, even on the low amp control side, you can use a simple test light. Uh, you know, if we use the scope, we certainly could have seen you know, the duty cycle, you know, pulse width modulated control, you know, a nice square wave, but I see no sense in looking at it because even the low side, uh, the control side, you know, could carry, you know, the amperage enough to turn on a test light. 
And that's that. That's all you need. Simple test slate. One, two, barbecue, baby. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now. You can see how that uh, relay is riveted on there. Um, <laughs> we could use Big Nasty in a chisel bit and just smash it off. But I think I'm going to be a little bit civilized about this. I'm just going to drill that rivet off. Uh, but as you can see, you kind of got to pull the grill back. So I'm going to set the camera down do that. And uh, we'll grab the, uh, the new one that I already ordered. We'll get that put on. that it's just an aluminum rivet so it does come off I think I, say, I think they got a little guide pin on them and yeah, they do they've got that little plastic guide pin so there she is we got tape in. see if we can knock the rest of that rivet down we'll stop it all right I'm gonna get nasty with it here Okay. Use your favorite punch. Slash screwdriver. Alright, there. Finally. So I'm gonna try to do, I think we can use this uh, these window regulator rivets. They're kind of a big honky rivet, like a quarter inch or whatever. Get that down in there. Back in the guide pin, stick a rivet in there, and we'll use this little guy go in there and pow pow. I think I can get this down. We have to kind of feed her down through. Quarter inch rivets, man, they break super hard. You almost gotta have an air riveter for them when you're doing like door uh, window, regulator, window regulators and stuff. Woo, baby! <laughs> that is nasty. That's it. That there. Is a PR14, and yet again, another Astro tool. My little, yeah, it came out all the way. Um, kind of an odd color scheme, but this little guy works great. As we can see, she's all riveted back in. Like the fact, if you don't have a rivet, um, what you can do, you can. Put the relay in the locator tab. So the little plastic, there's two holes. You got your hole for your rivet, then you got your other hole for the locator tab. Put it in that locator tab, and then just rotate it like, you know, one way or the other on this bumper, and you just use a self-tapping screw or something. That's your that's your other option. But rivets, you know, kind of they come from the factory there. Take it fired up. AC's on. Technically. We should have fans. Where's the light? We need a light. Oh, I just heard them. Did you hear them? Oh, that's right. There they are, spinning away. Oh, yeah. Alright, both our fans are spinning. That's it. That's an easy fix. Cooling fan relay, town and country, gravy. So hopefully that made sense. Like I said, a little, just a little short on time is all. But I didn't, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to, uh, to record this one. I think there's some, some valuable information there, maybe. Why do we take the headlight out? Uh, usually you can, you can do this job through the headlight bucket, but recording that, it's easier to take this whole panel off. Oh, where am I? Tell me. Oh, I hate it when we gotta be in a hurry. That's the way it is, you know. Deadlines, man, deadlines. Time constraints. Missing a 
screw. Who took the screw? Nobody see. I found it. Never mind. Never mind. Alright, that's it. Fantastic. Yeah, so you can do this through the headlight well. Make sure you check grounds on these because remember, remember that band we did with the turn signal problem, ground 102? That runs this cooling fan relay. So if you find you have no ground for the control side, look down, baby. That's probably uh, you know bad ground on that G102. I'll put a link to that video in here. That's probably the guy here to get this van. Well, that's it, viewers. Coolant fan relay, Chrysler Town and Country. A couple of quick little tips how to check that using just a simple test light. And, uh, you know, of course, there's multiple ways you can do it. You very easily could have done this with a, with a scan tool and bi directional controls and a, uh, a lab scope, but uh, we didn't really have to do that. Um, and I didn't even bother clearing the codes in, to be honest with you, because the thing's going to come back for an EGR valve, anyways, when the guy can afford to fix that. We're going to take care of that for him, so I didn't see any sense in. Uh, you know, erasing that code, but you can see how you very easily could just flash the codes out of it, you know, P0, P0480, pretty classic. I believe the description is cooling fan control circuit or cooling fan circuit. I don't know which, something like that. It has something to do with the fan. And uh, if you're working on a Dodge, it's likely the relay or a bad fan or bad ground, possibly a blown fuse or a broken wire. But in some cases, it's a relay. So check that, and uh, now you know how to do that. And we're checking that. Take a break and check us out on Facebook, Google+, and subscribe to our channel. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.